Well, hello everyone. It is currently about 5 o'clock in the afternoon on Tuesday, July the 2nd, 2019. And I am in downtown Marietta in front of a major Atlanta landmark that is Kentucky Fried Chicken's Big Chicken. Once there lived a creative soul just outside of Atlanta. He had a good job but never fit in. He had a big apartment, but it cost him a limb. So one day he packed it all up and threw it into storage, hit the open road, and became a traveling caricaturist. Now he lives in a camper and travels all the time. He works at fairs and festivals. For the price of a single click, you can join the ride. Also, don't forget to ring that bell icon. For the longest time, this is how people found their way around. As before GPS and stuff like that, they would say, well, do you know where the big chicken is? Well, where you need to get to is to go to the big chicken and turn, or it's to the north of the big chicken, or something along those lines. One of the reasons why I wanted to do another vlog about the big chicken is because currently, or just recently, uh, Yankee in the South did a vlog from Corbin, Kentucky, where the actual first Kentucky Fried Chicken uh, was. Today we're here in Corbin, Kentucky. And today we're gonna check out well, where it all began. Kentucky Fried Chicken, Colonel Sanders. And uh, as kids growing up around this area, we were under the impression that this was the first Kentucky Fried Chicken. That, that was just a child's thing though. I mean, looking at it from common sense, you would tell, you could tell that the first Kentucky Fried Chicken was probably somewhere in Kentucky. But as kids, that's what we thought. We thought this was the first one and that's why it was such a big deal and uh, that's why they had built it up so high. Something else I also remember growing up is that it did not always work where the eye turns and the beak opens and closes did not always work and when it did it clattered and vibrated and was not very good uh, and so it went into disrepair it stopped and then there was some kind of public uh, funding or something to to get this thing working again because it was considered such a landmark so uh, they got it working again also the public lure was the thing that really killed the little motors on the inside the first time was pigeons kept getting inside the gears and getting themselves mashed up inside the gears. <laughs> I don't know how true that is, but that's the local lore. Anyway, they've got it working now. They've got better motors in there, probably more shielded against pigeons getting into the machinery. Alright, so one of the first things that we see coming in here is a statue of the Colonel himself was a major failure through most of his life and didn't really start, uh, didn't really come up with the Kentucky Fried Chicken recipe until he was in his 80s. And uh, finally made his fortune. All right, so the sports camera's gonna do its thing, give you guys kind of that wide angle shot of the different memorabilia around here. So uh, we've got a lot of pictures of the Colonel in his heyday uh, against this back wall. And this looks like some kind of parade right there. Apparently he was at least a little bit of a friend of Disney. Was able to fund some excursions abroad. And uh, yeah, it's amazing somebody amassed this kind of a legacy and a fortune so late in life. It's an it's inspiration to all of us. Got a. Uh... Oh, look at that. It's got a little action there. You can open and close the beak. Very cool. This is an old advertisement from back when they first opened it. I wish there was a date on there. I can tell what this is from, but it really looks quite old. Okay, this, this poster right here is saying 1963. Wow. And you've got the ubiquitous shot glasses here, of course, and uh, different kinds of baseball hats, drink koozies, socks, t-shirts, cups, oh, and even even the socks with the, the Colonel's famous bolo tie, right there on the side of the sock, if that's something you want. 
when I lived out here, they had uh, some kind of plaques in here that you could read the history of the Big Chicken, because it did go through a lot of changes throughout the years and then through its restoration. Uh, but they, they took the plaques down and instead they've got these decorative retro uh, kind of posters up. Uh, so then the last time I was here, the last vlog I made about this, uh, they had cards that you could take for free that had the entire history on the back. Um, but uh, they don't have that now. They, they even stopped giving out the, the cards. Uh, so I'm not sure exactly why they seem to be trying to cover up their history but it seems a little odd. Uh, if I can, I'm going to find the footage of the last time I was here with the card and go ahead and splice that in now. 1963, and while it had a lot of different changes, this is what I remember more than anything else, was in 1995, the petition to have the big chicken restored to its former glory without the big grinding, failing uh, mechanisms in the head that kept the eye and the mouth moving. And so we have what it is today. And so that's going to do it for the big chicken for now. Uh, let me repeat. Do not eat here. Do not eat here. This, uh, it's, it's a cool building. It's a really nice landmark. It's very cool to look at. It's a good photo op. But I've eaten here twice and the experience was terrible. The, uh, the staff was surly. Uh, the food was late and then when it did finally come out it was like it was like lunchroom cafeteria food it was not good uh, so again come out here get your memorabilia get your picture with this thing enjoy the building but do not eat here if you um, if you're in this area I would definitely recommend instead to go eat at Jason's Deli off of Barrett Parkway Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And all of this for $10.79. And I can take as many trips up to that salad bar. And uh, well, I have to get fresh plates every time, but I can take as many trips as I want. So much better choice. And just look how cozy they make this place look. It's like a living room. <laughs> when I was uh, living in this area, I used to sit right here at the back of this restaurant and eat salads and just watch and draw people for hours and just, yeah, my absolute favorite place. Also, the soft serve ice cream is included. I thought I would cap off this video about historic Atlanta landmarks by coming out here to the famous Smyrna Covered Bridge. Now, after spending time in Indiana, it seems odd that Atlanta would make such a big deal about this covered bridge. But seriously, anytime somebody wants to do a collage or an homage of any kind to Atlanta, they always do the skyline with the King and Queen buildings, the Big Chicken, Turner Field, uh, Georgia Aquarium, and they always throw in this little bitty covered bridge. This little bitty one lane covered bridge is always in there with it. Uh, and with as much traffic as the Atlanta metro area gets, this thing is becoming a real hazard because people have to stop right here and make sure nobody's coming through here before they ease in and cautiously make their way through the bridge. But I don't see this ever being removed anytime soon. If they do anything, they might make a bypass for it, but this is probably always going to be here. Another unfortunate thing about this covered bridge is that to be able to stand outside of it and get pictures of it on foot is a very hard thing to do because as you can see there are no historic centers or parking lots or anything for you know probably a good mile on either side. You can't really pull over, get out, and take pictures. So how am I standing here? How did I make it here on foot? Well, I figured out that the Silver Comet Trail actually intersects with the Covered Bridge Road. So I tackled a chunk of the Silver Comet Trail, found my way out to that trussle, and then cut my way uh, down the side of the bank and made my way over to the Covered Bridge. And here I am now, standing on foot beside the famous Smyrna covered bridge. Okay, this covered bridge is 
uh, 132 feet long and 16 feet wide and uh, the the big deal about it really uh, other than just the historic nature of it and the fact that people that grew up here around here are just very nostalgic and proud of having it here is that it is the highest traffic covered bridge still left in the state at least according to Google <laughs> at any rate it was built in 18 and 72 originally built in 1872 but as vehicles became heavier in the 1950s uh, it was necessary to add more steel beams as well as these concrete pyres down here they weren't necessary back in the horse and buggy age but nowadays they are but still as much cars go through here like uh, big trucks u-hauls uh, trucks that have large flatbeds on them they just can't. They can't make it through. And they've put this right here in, in, in the way so that if you think you can uh, and you try to, you're just going to get stuck right here instead of hitting the historic bridge. All right, so that's enough talk about this fantastic historic 1872 bridge. Uh, since I am on foot right here around it, uh, why not just walk on down the bank and get you guys some nice wide angle shots from the underneath side that's probably something you will never see on any other channel so let's make it happen and just like that here we are up underneath the historic covered bridge i just climbed down this bank over here now the reason why i feel so comfortable doing this and coming out here is because there were many times in my early 20s that i walked took that same cut from the, the silver comet trail and walked down to this river and put my waders on and fished all the way down this river and uh, because it's so hard to get to and such an un uncommon place for people to think about they uh <laughs> nobody ever thinks to come down here and fish and it was some great fishing so yeah that's, that's part of why I just I have no qualms at all being right here no worries. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and get that sports camera out and give you guys some good uh, wide angle shots of this area. Well, the people driving on through are starting to turn their headlights on now. You know what that means, guys. It's it's hit 8 o'clock, and I think it's about time I drew this one to a close. Uh, so, I hope you guys have enjoyed this little vlog about two of the major Atlanta historic landmarks. If you did, please don't hesitate to indicate so by hitting that thumbs up lo lo like button. Leave something down in the comment section. Subscribe if you haven't already. And make sure to ring that bell icon so you'll start receiving notifications of all my future updates. Join the Facebook group. I'm going to put a link to the Facebook group and the Instagram down in the description. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one.